Hello everybody, and welcome to Theology 101. Today I'll be comparing the views between those who believe that an eternal hell is fair and those who do not. This is the second part of a debate between annihilationism and eternal torment. If you missed the first part, I'll leave a link for you to watch here. Let me quickly define annihilationism and eternal torment. Annihilationism is a belief that God will eventually destroy or annihilate unbelievers. This view is often connected with the concept of conditional immortality, which is a belief that the human soul is not automatically immortal. Eternal torment is a belief that those who reject Jesus will remain conscious in hell forever. Now let's get back to the debate. One problem with your view is that the punishment for hell does not fit the crime. If a person hypothetically lived for 100 years, shouldn't their punishment for rebelling against God be for 100 years? How is an eternal punishment fair for a crime that was not eternal? An eternal punishment undermines God's justice and love because it does not accurately reflect the severity of a person's crime. I think it is not our place to question whether God is fair. God by his nature defines what is fair. Justice and righteousness are defined by God's character. Otherwise, he would not be God. So if God determines that it is fair for people to be punished eternally, then who are we to say that it is unfair? Since God is the one who defines justice, then any punishment he gives will always fit the crime. You seem to focus on the act of a crime rather than the person the crime was committed against. What I mean is that an identical act can result in differing punishments based on whom you committed this act against. If you slap the dog, your punishment will probably be a fine. If you slap the random person, your punishment would increase and you might even go to jail. But if you slap the president of the United States, then your punishment would increase and you will be in real trouble. All three scenarios are based on the same act, but the punishment differs depending on the value of the person you commit this crime against. Although an unbeliever only rebelled against God for a finite period, they did so against an eternal being. Since God is infinitely valuable, a temporary crime against him warrants an eternal punishment. Another problem with their view is that it does not accurately reflect the peace that will exist in heaven. How can Christians live in peace knowing that their loved ones are suffering for eternity. Passages that talk about Jesus' complete victory over death and suffering doesn't make sense if some people are going to suffer in hell forever. Considering the description of the new heavens and the new earth, annihilationism makes the most sense. For there to be complete peace, there cannot be a place of eternal suffering. Instead, when God gets rid of sin, this also includes sinful people and allows an environment of complete peace in God's kingdom. The problem with your view is that you assume that peace cannot exist when people suffer in hell forever. However, you still have the same problem if God destroys unbelievers. How can you live in peace knowing that God destroyed your loved ones? It doesn't matter whether unbelievers are destroyed or cast into hell. The result is that we can still be negatively affected with the reality that some of our loved ones are not going to be with us in God's kingdom. So annihilationism does not solve your problem. Also, annihilationism cannot explain what Jesus taught. But I tell you that it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. Jesus' point is that even the worst people we can imagine would receive a lesser form of punishment in hell than those who received more exposure to Jesus and rejected him. How can there be different levels of suffering in hell if everybody is annihilated? According to Jesus, Every person's punishment will fit their crime. Annihilationism does not make sense of distributive justice, meaning that a person receives what he or she has earned. If annihilationism is true, then Hitler and Gandhi will receive the same punishment. Annihilationism does not necessarily mean that people are extinguished immediately. Some people must suffer longer than others, but eventually every person will be destroyed. This would account for the different levels of sufferings that Jesus mentions. However, if every person is going to suffer forever, how can there be different levels of suffering in hell? Does hell's fire burn hotter for Hitler than for another unbeliever? Is hell darker for Hitler than another unbeliever? Your view is problematic in describing how there can be different levels of suffering in hell if every person has to suffer forever. When talking about the different levels of suffering in hell, Jesus uses the word Gehenna rather than Hades. Hades refers to the temporary holding place for the dead until they are transferred into the lake of fire. It is possible that people will suffer for different lengths of time in Hades and then will be extinguished when they are transferred into the lake of fire, if annihilationism is true. But Jesus is not commenting on the different levels of suffering in Hades. 
He is commenting on the different levels of suffering in Gehenna, which refers to the lake of fire. This means that there will be suffering in the final place where unbelievers will be placed. This assumes that they must continue to exist in the lake of fire. This means that they are not extinguished when they are placed in the lake of fire. So annihilationism does not make sense of how there will be different levels of suffering in Gehenna or the lake of fire. Now I agree that it is difficult to understand how God would distinguish different levels of suffering in hell, especially since we can't fully comprehend hell. Jesus' point is that although people will suffer eternally, not everyone will suffer equally. Since God is always fair, he does not give the same punishment to every unbeliever, but bases their punishment on how accountable they are to God. Even though each person might suffer differently in hell, every person must suffer eternally because they sinned against an eternal being. So what did you guys think? Which view did you find more convincing? If you found this video helpful, please like it and share it with a friend. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you'll be notified when future Versus videos are released. Until next time, see you!